Hello and welcome to this week's review. We're looking at a pair of speakers this time around, stand mounted speakers. Although they're relatively large-ish for stand mounts, they're from France and a company called Triangle. Now these are 40th anniversary designs because birthdays and all that jazz. And they're known as the Comet, or rather being French, Comet? I'm not sure. Maybe you can tell me how to pronounce this. It's not going to be Comet, is it? It's going to be Comet. But because I'm an ignorant Englishman, I'm going to call them the Comet. Price for these, £1,500. And I say 40th anniversary. Well, 40th anniversary back in 2020. But 43rd anniversary doesn't really scan. And well, you know, 2020, all those viral issues we had back then. So it was a thing. Now, before we go any further, I think we need to take a closer look. And welcome to the close look section for the triangle. Comet 40th anniversary stand mounted speakers. Now what you see before you is the Comet speaker, but this is not the first because there was an original Comet speaker and that was released back in 1994. These new 8-ohm models are basically rewritten versions of that 1994 original design, but drastically rewritten. So you get the same front mounted pair of ports, and then, well, a whole lot of enhancements from there on in. Up top, we have a 25mm horn tweeter with a phase plug that is rather rocket cone sharp. That's interesting in and of itself, I have to say, because I'm now expecting a live and responsive upper frequency area here. This one is rather pretty in its rose gold finery. Moving down below, we have the paper stroke woody fiber mid base unit, which spans 165 millimeters and fixes a large magnet at the rear. Inside is rather high quality wiring, high end capacitors, and similarly high end resistors, and a relatively high crossover point for the crossover. Finishes are Blonde Sycamore and Santos Rosewood. And I like the look, which in conjunction with the white mid base unit, gives these speakers a rather, I don't know, late 70s or maybe better, early 80s retro theme. What do you think? What interests me too is the sensitivity of 90 decibels, which ain't bad for a pair of stand mounts. These speakers, hence, will be relatively easy to drive. But they are also relatively large at 200 millimeters by 400 millimeters by 324. So be aware of the physicality before you buy. Despite the size, they are not too heavy at 8.8 .8 kilograms. I expected a little bit more. So easy to transport. Well, relatively so, I would say. And that's basically the techie aspect. So how do these things sound? Well, let's nip over to the sound quality tests and we'll find out. Welcome back to the sound quality tests for the Triangle Comet 40th Anniversary Edition speakers, stand mount speakers no less. And I began the sound tests with CD and the album Beauty by Ruichi Sakamoto, rest in peace Mr. Sakamoto, and the track Diabaram, which offers a delicate, varied and relatively complex vocal ballad, one that combines melancholy with fragility, background synths, wind instruments, and a resident cymbal tapping, plus, of course, bass, and that makes for an intriguing musical arrangement. Now, to begin, I decided to compare these £1,500 speakers with speakers costing a little less, just to see what you get for the extra money. I brought in a pair of Technics SBC 600s, also stand mount, a little bit smaller in size, 
really good base and priced around £1,000. So as I say, what do you get for the 500 extras? Now, as the triangles offered a relatively large cabinet for stand mounts, I wondered if base might be a talking point, and that was part of the reason for drafting in the Technic speakers for comparison. First impression for the Comets? Well, instrumental separation. It was very good indeed. I get a real layering effect here with the double-tracked secondary vocal, but behind those vocals are cymbals, backing instruments, and then more vocals running towards a 3D effect way off into the distance. Now, part of the reason this layering exists in the first place is down to a sense of clarity around the upper mids and the treble. And treble, yeah, I did wonder about the treble when I saw that little horn tweeter. And gotta say, treble is noticeably detailed here. In fact, finely detailed. Now, a moment ago when I mentioned the album Beauty, I mentioned it featured regular cymbal taps. Now, these cymbal taps are not just cymbal taps. There's been an effect placed over them. They are phased. So it's not just a case of tap and then you hear the shine of the cymbal. It moves around in a phasing motion. And many speakers pick that up, but they don't really they don't really explore that phasing effect. The triangles do. That phasing effect is pronounced here. The effects can be heard via the techniques, but the triangles add intensity to this phasing effect. It's a delicate effect, it's fairly subtle but the triangles really highlight it very well indeed. Now the mid-range, well, there's absolutely no hint of edgy mids or barking mids here, but the vocals were not afraid to offer sudden high volume peaks. You'd be going along nicely, and then all of a sudden you'd get a loud and blaring effect. Now, this is not a bad thing. On the contrary, the vocal crescendos were rather dynamic in nature, adding a sense of life to the music. Next up, I wanted to compare the triangles with a similarly priced set of speakers, so I brought in the Spendor A1s. Now, the triangles offer a larger cabinet design over the similarly priced Spendors, so I wasn't expecting the Spendors to triumph in base terms, but I was expecting the A1s to challenge the triangles in terms of finesse and elegance, especially around the mids and the treble. Now, comparing the two speakers, it was completely fascinating because each offers pros and cons. The triangles have a touch of the, there's a touch of the young stallion about them. They are, they're full of energy, verging on the dangerous. They ooze life. They're capable of just about anything but they lack a true sense of discipline. The Spendors, on the other hand, they add extra focus to the mid-range. They were civilized, they were controlled, they offered a definite neutrality. But compared to the triangles, they could be accused of being a bit bland. Now, let me emphasize this. Spendor A1 speakers are not bland, but, Compared to the triangles, they lacked a bit of verve and a bit of dynamism. That's what the triangles offered in spades. The triangles injected air and space into the soundstage. They bounced around with a sense of gay abandon. The spendors held it together. They knew what they were doing and they kept it measured. Bringing in vinyl, I played Plaid's Nightcrawler and the album, which I can never pronounce, something like Fiorm Phalorx, something like that. It's a terrible pronunciation, but superb electronica album, anyway. That was interesting because this intelligent techno featured hard beats. There was a delicious guitar line in there, but also a signature break that injected pace and air into the soundstage as a contrast. Now, I must emphasize that the break in this particular track, Nightcrawler, it was an essential moment and a revealing moment because 
as I say, this break offered an uplifting passage in this music. And during the break, lots of air is pushed into the soundstage, and that increases the emotion of the actual music. Now, the triangles processed this track superbly. They injected the music with the necessary X factor. That is, according to the triangles, and the triangle speakers are absolutely correct about this, this track is not about the bass, and there's plenty of that. It's not about the beats, and beats are all over this track. And it's not about the energy, and this is a very energetic track. But that's not what this track is about. It's about the intense emotional bliss injected in that break. And I tell you what, the triangles nailed it. So that, basically, is my review of the Triangle Comet 40th Anniversary Stand Mounted Speakers. So before we go, let me give you a few final thoughts. I'll give you some pros and cons, and then I'll give you a rating. Now, the Triangle Comet, or Comet, 40th Anniversary Edition, offers a definite style, a definite personality. And I like that. I like the fact that these speakers provide a sonic choice. There's not enough choice in hi-fi these days. Doesn't matter what you're talking about, speakers, amps, whatever. I like the option, the alternative option that these triangles give you. The triangles are, they're boisterous. They are animated. Some listeners will think that the mids verge on the unruly. They will be suspicious of the mids, suspicious that they might lose control. And I get that because the mid range can sound like that. It can sound as if it's on the verge of losing it. Now, other hi fi listeners out there, they will adore the mid range panache and the sheer flamboyance of the speakers. Bass has a real impact and power, but also dash and elan, typically French, hey, while the treble entices with fine detail. To emphasize the fact these triangle speakers are not speakers by numbers. I am sure computers were part of the creation process for these designs, but the triangles do not sound like they have emerged from exacting tools. They sound like they are speakers, not of the brain, but of the heart. Pros and cons. In the good section, well, I loved the finely detailed treble. It's been a long time since I've heard a pair of speakers where, of all things, it's the treble that really hits you. It's the treble that is the headline. You know what? Bass, well, bass had a real flair. It was really enjoying itself. This is party bass, and it puts a real smile on your face. Midrange, again, midrange had a style. Not particularly disciplined, on the edge of losing it completely, but staying on the right side of the line. And it sounded rather nice indeed. The aesthetic quality of the actual speakers themselves. They had a nice blend of the modern and the retro. And hey, nostalgia, it's the biggest industry in the world right now. So Triangle is plugging into that. And on the bad side, well, focus could be improved rather, especially around the mid-range. And linked to that, we have slightly undisciplined mids. They can be on the verge of collapse, but it's fun, even so. <laughs> it's fun listening to the mid-range because you really don't know where they're going to go. But for the conservative listener, well, that might be an issue. Even so, that does not put me, for one, off. I still like these speakers very much indeed. So I'm going to give them an award-winning rating. They're going to get 8 out of 10 and a groovy. Congratulations to Triangle. And that's your lot. Thank you very much for staying to the end of the video before you run off to make a cup of tea, because I know you're desperate for a cuppa, aren't you? 
Before you do that, can you just click quickly, before you run off, the like and subscribe buttons down below? It just helps this channel to sail through the algorithm. And we all know how much we love the algorithm, hey. In addition, down below, I've got some contact details for Triangle and also other contact details for my website and my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join, and my Patreon page. Now, on the Patreon site, there is an exclusive video which is turning up every single week now. It's Hi-Fi News, etc. So, if you want your fill of Hi-Fi News, and in addition to that, hints and tips, and trivia, and other goodies, every single week, it's on Patreon exclusively. So, check out, there's all kinds of other stuff over there too, by the way, lots of other exclusives, and buyer's guides, and all kinds of stuff, music features, and stuff, videos, text, a lot. Anyway, Hi-Fi News. If you were looking for that, it's over in Patreon. Helps to support me, helps to support this channel as well. I'll be back on Friday with music alerts because that's a new feature of this channel, music alerts. If you want to find out what music, physical music, that is physical formats, if you want to find out what I have received this week, or in this case, next week, then check out Music Alerts. Normally it's a combo of CDs and vinyl. I hope to see you there. I hope to have your company. Until that time, folks. Bye-bye for now.